question. Uh, pleased to say that we have several members of the department joining us as well. We've got Dr. Holly Frederick, uh, Dr. Bobby Karimi, and Mrs. Julie McMonagall, and Mr. Uh, Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Castor. So um, what I thought we'd do, we'll go through uh, just a brief overview of the department, update you on some of the current things we've been working on, as well as how we've been handling working under these uh, kind of challenging conditions. And then we'll open it up for any discussions about anything you might have. So just an overview of who's in our department. We've got a, a great team. Almost anything related to the environment, we've got covered. We've got geologists. We've got environmental engineers. We've got environmental scientists. We've got people with specialties that cover every environmental challenge that you might be interested in or might need to be addressed. And um, as I say, we'll talk more about that in, uh, as we go forward. We also have a great support staff of Colonel Castor, Mrs. McMonagall, and also Mrs. Garrison, who keeps our office running uh, very smoothly. And we have some retired faculty that still are involved, as well as uh, an adjunct professor that's a local um, world-renowned environmental engineer uh, Dr. Tom Walski, who involved, is involved in a number of the uh, initiatives we have going on in the, in the program. Some other background about, the, about the, uh, our program. Uh, we've got very established professors that are critically acclaimed in their field, uh, publishing, and ideally with students, also presentations at conference at students. Um, Majority have written books or contributed book chapters. We've got professional engineers, professional geologists, as well as board certified environmental engineers. And many are elected officials and officers in uh, numerous professional societies uh, at the local, regional, and national levels. Also a little bit more about our programs. Our department offers a BS in environmental engineering, a BS in environmental science with two tracks in biology and earth sciences, a BS in geology, and also a BA in earth and environmental sciences with a certification in secondary education. We also offer minors in sustainability management, geology, and earth and environmental science. We very often get asked, why is our department have this group together? Why aren't the engineers with the other engineers? Why aren't the scientists on their own or with the other department? And I think the good answer is that environmental problems and solving environmental problems is very often a multidisciplinary approach. Now, my background is in hazardous waste remediation. I had worked for several years uh, for environmental contracts, contractors cleaning up these hazardous waste sites. And on the team, it was never an individual on alone. It was usually a team of an engineer, uh, a geologist, or a hydrogeologist in environmental science. Because these problems are so challenging, you need everybody bringing to the table their expertise. And we've set up our programs that way as well. All three programs require a good core understanding of chemistry, physics, mathematics, and biology. But basically, this is the foundation you want and need to solve environmental problems. Then you can specialize depending on what your interests are and acquire the skills that help you to address these problems, either either in geology, environmental engineering, or environmental science. And we also have what's referred to as an industrial advisory council that is comprised of both industry professionals and our alums. And they give us feedback constantly on what's going on in the field, what skill sets our graduates need, and we're constantly tweaking our program to make sure that our graduates have the best skill set available to solve environmental problems. We're fortunate that we have great facilities on campus in the Cohen Science Center primarily, as well as the Spark Learning Center, where we have a state-of-the-art GPS global positioning system, GIS, graphic geographic information system, uh, software, and tools in our remote sensing computer lab. We also have a, a, a well-equipped water quality lab, air quality lab, hydrology lab, geology and rock mineral lab, technotics lab, and a lot of field equipment that the students get to use both in their courses and in their research projects. 
we're also fortunate that we're local and we try to, as much as possible, take our students on field trips and involve them in outdoor lab activities, both as part of classroom and as well as uh, for research projects. Now, you may be asking, what are we doing now in regards to the pandemic? Uh, one of our geology professors, Dr. Matt Fiegenbeiter, um, recently acquired a camera that allows him to do virtual field trips. So if you saw on the previous slide, we saw um, a, a field trip to the uh, Tubbs Natural Area. Well, Dr. Finkenbein created this, give it a second to load, which is a basically now how he's been able to adapt to the challenging situation we have. And he created this 3D rendition of that site where unfortunately we can't go temporarily right now, but he allows him to teach and point out the different features as if they were at the site. So this is one tool that we've been using in these challenging circumstances. And that's Dr. Fingerbinder there. And I'll show you just one more shot that he sent. And this is from Boulder Field, which is at Hickory Run State Park. Uh, we were laughing when we thought this shot, that looked like a, a shot of, uh, you know, they were doing physical and social distancing before it was fashionable. But here's a shot that uh, Dr. Fingerbinder took uh, from Boulder Field. That he's using now. And there's Dr. Finkenbeiner. That allows us to, you know, keep our current level of um, of teaching going in these challenging times. So, we could probably even look for some snakes that are known to be in these crevices. So that's one way we've our our faculty has risen to the challenge of uh, adapting to the uh, you know the challenging circumstances and still bringing a, a quality education to our, our current students. Now last week was the 50th anniversary of Earth Day and thought this uh, cartoon was or, or was appropriate to kind of lay, you know, lay the groundwork of where we are now. Um, it says we've got less industrial pollution, less pollution from cars, less noise pollution, less, and lots less litter on the street, and all it took was a pandemic shutdown. Okay, well, we've got this situation. There's many saying this is the new normal. What's it going to be like in the future? How are we going to address, you know, the consequences of this pandemic? And what does it mean to a student in college or a, 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 an up and coming graduate? What issues are going to change? What issues are going to be there? And how do, were our degree programs prepare you for this new future? Well, there's still going to be the issues that have been present before. There's still going to be challenges with energy, with natural resources, with looking how we operate our businesses and our, our buildings. Climate change is still an issue. Infrastructure is still going to be a challenge, as well as um, you know, remediation of environmental chemicals. In fact, infrastructure is going to be um, you know, going to go boom as far as jobs. I'm currently the Northeast Regional Vice President of the Pennsylvania Society of Professional Engineers. And I had been on a, a call last week uh, to discuss some items for the engineers. And one of the things that we did talking about, you know, what's everybody's current status, and what do we think the future is gonna like, almost every engineer on that call said that infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. So challenges with water, with safe drinking water, with wastewater treatment, with air pollution, with energy, all these things that are part of infrastructure, there's going to be a lot of jobs and there's going to be a lot of need for, for students and graduates with the skill sets to address those needs. Currently, we have involved a lot of um, uh, require students to have a, a capstone research period or sometimes referred to as senior projects. And we just successfully completed these uh, as a result of the coordination of Dr. Bronze and Dr. Frederick last week. And the students successfully presented their research topics and 
their findings via Zoom. So despite all the challenges for that, we think they, you know, they did an, an awesome job with this. And on this slide here shows some of the projects that were completed this past year. They entailed looking at projects on landslide susceptibility mapping, um, fracture analysis, sediment analysis uh, related to studying climate change, looking at hydraulic modeling in water and sewer systems, looking at hydraulic properties related to uh, water flow and roughness properties, looking at biochar as a potential uh, treatment technology for improving water quality, and as well as addressing issues with acid mine drainage, looking at um, stream restorations for local streams that had some challenges regarding to how they were designed and some of the problems they're having now, looking at alternative uh, disinfectants, looking at ways to improve uh, fishing areas, uh, improving the water quality in those areas, doing greenhouse gas inventories and preparing uh, climate action plans for a local city, as well as looking at both on campus as well in the region, green infrastructure challenges and applications. So we try to tailor our projects. We're fortunate that we're in an area that we've got resources to, to take advantage of, to get these um, you know, projects that are you know, important and you know, will give students a great skill set as they graduate. We always show this slide about the um, job outlook, and this had been the current Bureau of Labor Statistics before, of course, the, the pandemic hit. But all three majors, I feel, still continue to have a, a bright outlook. There's going to be a lot of challenges and opportunities with the skill sets of geologists, environmental sciences, and environmental engineers. Also, every year, the American Society of of uh, civil engineers publish this what they call their infrastructure grades or their infrastructure report card. And this is the most current one that they've posted for the United States as a whole. And once again, this is before the pandemic. But even you, you can see here, there's still a lot of things that need addressing. Things like drinking water, you know, we've got to improve our grades on that. Energy, hazardous waste management, uh, solid waste management, wastewater, all need addressing, all are going to be opportunities to, um, for employment. And we always get the questions asked, what do you do with this degree after you get it? What do our graduates do? Well, there's opportunities either in consulting or industry uh, with state and federal agencies, with contractors, with graduate school. And this year, despite all the challenges with the pandemic, we've gotten word from our, our graduates that uh, several have been accepted to, to graduate school, actually one to law school. Um, others are going to either Lehigh, Villanova, or Drexel. Several have gotten offers, and they're actually going to start working remotely from a local engineering firms. And others are in contact, so we're still optimistic that the uh, job market is gonna be good for our, our graduates. We also have a great alumni network and we try to meet with them at least once a year, if not more often. And what's great about this is they keep in contact with us, they serve as mentors. And in fact, they'll contact us when there's openings at their facilities. And we got a call this week from one of our research graduates, uh, you know, asking us about, or telling us that her firm has opportunities and how we can facilitate that. So we are very fortunate in that guard. They provide us um, insight on what the field is doing, what skill sets they, you know, uh, we should improve upon with our current students, and as well as any opportunities uh, that may arise at the firms that they're working at. As noted, we our hallmark and what we're known for is providing hands-on research opportunities for our students, and um, a lot of them have gone on to present their research findings at projects uh, and competitions. We've been very successful with them winning awards in this regard or to be involved with international experiences. And we're very proud of their accomplishments as well as winning um, awards from organizations. Many of them have been able to 
published their results in peer-reviewed journals. And as I said, when hopefully things get back to normal again, and we're optimistic that will happen soon, we have a lot of activities that our students do for both out outreach internally, as well as in the community. And we know how to have fun with our students. We typically will get them out for recreational activities in the area, either golfing or softball. But we have very active clubs that are called the Geo Explorers that have traveled you know, to Hawaii, to the national parks to, um, to do that, or to even to hike locally. So we're always looking and on board for doing those sorts of activities. Also, we have very good relationships with professional societies. We will take students to meetings. We will take them to conferences. We interact with their current members. So we get a lot of good feedback that way. And we have every ex expectation that this will continue as well. So to summarize then, and then we'll open it up for some questions. As I said, we've got several of our, our faculty and staff here to address any conditions. And once again, to make a good point on why you should consider us, why we're a good choice for your, your future, is that we have a very strong curriculum. We have very dedicated and passionate faculty, even when they're faced with challenges like a pandemic, have risen to the occasion to make sure that the students are still receiving a quality education and that they're still able to complete their, their research projects and, and capstone projects. We very much have a hands-on approach. We in, employ field experiences and, and, and work opportunities in that regard. Our primary focus is on undergraduate teaching where you have the instructors teaching both the lab and the lecture portion, and you have opportunities if you find that you're interested in the type of research that our faculty is doing, they're more than well welcome to, to get you involved with that. We have undergraduate research opportunities. There's something called the mentoring program that allows you to work on projects and get paid. We are invested with a, a good network for both internship and cooperative education opportunities and study abroad opportunities. As I mentioned, if you have whatever your interests are, we can facilitate them. And we have very active student members and student chapters of a number of professional societies. So with that, I will see if we can unmute everybody. And then we'll open it up to any questions or see if anybody wants uh, to add anything, any of the people that are on there. So I believe it's Lily and Matt are our two visitors. So we'd like to say welcome and see if you have any particular questions that we can address. And I'll say so we have a small group, so I think we can do this by voice, or if not, you're welcome to type in the chat. I don't really have any questions. I seem to cover everything I needed to hear, so. Okay, is there anything, uh, is this anything uh, else we can provide information? We've got, as I said, we've got uh, a number of the faculty and staff here. Is there anything else that we can um, answer, or any concerns that you might have? How about Matt? I see you're on uh, uh, muted now as well. Is there anything we can address or answer? Uh, no, I, th I think you covered everything. I think I'm good. Okay. How about any of our folks? Anything you'd like to add or? Um... Well, I'm I'm just curious for both uh, Lily and Matthew. Uh, what what are your interest areas, and how did you get interested in those um, disciplines? Um, my uncle is an environmental engineer, and he also works. So, is your uncle uh, Tom? Is your uncle, um, yeah. Is it Tom Bertroni? Yeah. Okay. That's he's great. Our, he's one of our famous graduates. <laughs> well, actually, if I may say, we've been working with Tom this past semester on some of his stormwater issues. So oh, really? I don't give talk to him lately, but we're still getting some feedback on a stormwater survey we sent out. Huh. Interesting. 
he's out in Pittsburgh, I believe, right? Yeah. And what about yourself, Lily? Uh, what are your interest areas and what drew you to them? Um, I think I'm really interested in either like water cleanups or renewable energy because they're our biggest issues right now. And I've always been interested in outside. I've done a couple river cleanups myself, actually. And it just, it was really interesting to me. Have you had a lot of uh, opportunities to explore environmental science courses in, or earth science courses in um, high school or? Um... Yeah, I'm currently taking AP environmental science and I've also taken zoology, oceanography, and um, a couple extra biology courses. Excellent. Are you, are you from PA or from? Abroad? Yeah, from PA. Uh, um, just mentioning what's um, something that's having a big impact in water quality now is harmful algae blooms. And uh, again, just because you're interested in, you know, water issues, I know we were working on some of our local lakes and, uh, you know, having some students out in the field measuring nutrient levels. And we're looking at, again at how maybe those harmful algae blooms uh, develop related to the nutrient concentration. So it is something that's affecting even fairly clean waters now. So uh, again, just so you're kind of thinking about some topics that are relevant. Yeah, and, and Dr. Frederick has been working on that a number of years. And in fact, she had a group of students this past November up at the uh, National Lake Management Conference in, in Burlington, Vermont, that presented their findings. So this is an ongoing research and hopefully they're helping the, particularly the North Lake community uh, solve some of the challenges that they're addressing there in regards to algae blooms and uh, I believe it was low oxygen levels, correct? It was a challenge. Yeah. And anytime you could get out and talk with members of the community, I know there are liaison there is uh, John's Low Tech. And we were just communicating last week about, you know, the status and we still have some canoes on his property and he's happy to leave them there. He said, don't worry. As soon as you could get back out, come back out to the lake. So it's a nice, it's a nice area to work at and we're looking to expand to look at some additional lakes in that area as well. I guess I can ask Matt and Lily, how are your current, are you managing all right? Are you, I assume you're seniors in high school now, right? How are you managing with your classes? Is everything that way going smoothly? Uh, yeah, so far it's been good. It's, um, yeah, I guess, but we'll get through it. Yeah, I was going to say that it, you know, even though this is a challenge, they say sometimes with challenges comes opportunities. And I think anything in the environmental field, everything that I've been given, um, you know, either read or, or people I've talked to say that there's going to be a, a, a great need to uh, for people with the skill sets to address these uh, challenges that we're going to be facing. If I, if I can mention too, even I spoke with um, one of our alumni, Rachel, yesterday, who was uh, sending us a job announcement. So I asked some more questions about that job announcement. And she said that uh, their work is not slowing down despite the pandemic. So they do have people going out in the field. She said they changed some of the rules. People can only go out uh, one person in a vehicle at a time, but they do have field work that they have to do. So um, you know, they're, they're managing and they're moving forward. And she said it didn't slow their work down um, really at all, despite the ch challenges of, you know, having to stay quarantined and work remotely. Yeah, I know the other, the other students that I, I know have, have gotten offers, they've already set them up to work remotely in the beginning. So they've been able to make that transition as well. It's a local firm right outside of Philadelphia. So the firms are, you know, they need the, the personnel and they're, you know, they're helping everybody adapt to, uh, to be able to, to begin an employment once they finish school and graduate this, uh, this coming summer. So Matt, what area were you interested in? Lily kind of mentioned, but you didn't really mention what area you were interested in. Uh, kind of in the climate change department. Like I also was thinking about like water treatment, but I'm kind of leaning towards like the issues in climate change. I think the good thing is you get a chance to explore all of those as part of the curriculum. Yeah. And so, and the background is important so that you understand the different, 
you know, relationships between those issues. So that's, you know, it's, I think it's good as a freshman to have more than one area that you're interested in. Yeah, because yeah, you want that solid foundation. So, and as I said, our, our courses and uh, actually a lot of the work that Dr. Finkenbeiner is doing is related to climate change. We offer courses in that and both the, uh, the science as well as some of the modeling. So uh, we've got people that are kind of on the cutting edge of, of addressing um, you know, our understanding the issues with climate change, as well as offering uh, opportunities to you know, go forward and, and solve them related to energy, related to sustainability. What other interests uh, do you two have outside of uh, academic interests? Uh, I play a few sports in high school, but I don't think I'm going to play in college. Uh, but other than that, um, no, I don't really know. Yeah, I'm pretty outdoorsy myself. I've been doing cross country for the past six years, but I've decided to not run at Wilkes because of the history of minor injuries I've been getting over the past few years. Definitely be careful of that for sure. But um, if you are interested in outdoors activities, there's the Geo Explorer Club that does big trips, but also does uh, local smaller trips as well. And uh, they're usually pretty well motivated to do these things. and. Um, this year, I think uh, we decided earlier not to go on a trip and then it sort of worked in our favor. So we didn't particularly lose any club funds for that. But uh, uh, we've gone to Hawaii, we've gone to the American Southwest, and um, we were discussing going to Puerto Rico. But uh, some local trips we've done were uh, canoeing at several lakes and they've done uh, park cleanups and trail cleanups. And um, they were going to go before this all began to... Um, I think it was Penn Caverns um, to kind of They explore. went, they went, they went there. Was it, oh yes, they did go to Penn Caverns. Yeah, with Do Dr. Anaya also, took them there, yeah. It was the other one that they were unable to go to, the Bird Sanctuary, yeah. um, but hopefully yeah, we'll the be Hawk, able to Hawk that. Mountain was right yeah. the weekend that the pandemic broke out, but they did get to Penn Caverns. Yeah, but they do a lot of uh, different things, so there's always opportunities for you to integrate very quickly and make friends that share a lot of your common interests within the department. And it's a nice balance from your academic work. It's good to get outside and take a hike instead of, you know, too much, too much work. It's good perspective for you too. Yeah, we also do a lot of outreach with the community. So if you like being involved with cleanups or like working with young children, teaching them about science, there's, there's a lot of opportunities to do that as well. And it's always a lot of fun, uh, particularly with the young, with the young children. Or even people in the community. I know we've worked with um, Patriots Cove, where there's a, a veteran who's working to set up the area f as a, a retreat for other um, veterans and first responders. And so it's been a good ex experience for working with, to go out and um, you know hear his input, help the the. Uh, organization get a little bit more information on water quality and then they learn you know some of them have volunteered for some of their work which was putting in cross veins and uh, some stream habitat yeah and then matt you mentioned that you were interested in climate change um i have several uh, students working on a project that's um in uh, facilitated by the department of environmental protection that we're helping local communities do their greenhouse gas inventories and develop their climate action plans. And we're finishing up the first one now for the city of German. So there's opportunities to learn about that, um, you know, besides the climate science, but also how do we address floor, particularly with um, creating climate action plans for local communities. And I, you know, we have every reason to believe that that's gonna continue as well. So there'll be those opportunities. Uh, to work in the community here, uh, as well as the, you know, statewide to help uh, address climate change. Interesting. Okay, anything, you, can we answer anything about the campus or the area? Uh, you know, so we're hopefully looking forward to get back. 
Um, as I said, we're, we're in a, our, uh, the majority of our offices and our labs are housed in, I guess you can see in the picture that they gave me to use behind me is the Cohen Science Center. Uh, fairly new, it's gonna, just seven years old. It is a lead building, a lead green building. And um, we're you know, fortunate that the labs are, are great. And um, we have, the, as I said, the computer, the GIS remote sensing lab that um, you know, is used primarily for our classes, but in between classes, um, our students have you know, first priority for, uh, for using that for, for, for their purposes, you know, for homework or whatever. Uh, we also have labs in the, in the Stark Learning Center in the basement the uh, geophysics lab is down there as well as some other growth chambers so we have we feel particularly for an undergraduate um, university um, equipment and resources that many students wouldn't get access to until they're in graduate school so that's another thing our classes i'd say our biggest class is um you know maybe 15 20. so another nice feature is um you know you you get to know your your professors and we always laugh that sometimes we have their text numbers. So if they oversee sleep for class, we can text them in the morning and, and see what happened. So we have a very nice, almost like, you know, like a family relationship. So um, as opposed to some of the bigger universities where you just may be a number in a large lecture hall. So if you like the small um, you know, family type atmosphere um, for learning, I, you know, that's another advantage of our program. Okay, um, if you folks have no other questions, I'd say you, our contact info is on there. Uh, feel free to, to follow up with us if you need any additional information or anything specific comes up. Does anybody else want to add anything? Okay, maybe we'll go through. Uh, uh, Dr. Frederick, anything else you'd like to add or? Um, well, I think, uh, one of the advantages, certainly, of our program is getting out in the field, um, working on some real world projects. I know what I missed most about this part of the semester was we had four good field trips set up, and so we didn't necessarily get a chance to do those as well as we would have wanted. Um, but it's great because, um, you know, as soon as we get back in, in the classroom, we'll be able to kind of pick up right where we left off with those experiences. And again, there's a lot of balance that students get working together, working in groups, um, and different perspective from different sides of the, the um, environment. So you might learn about soil or air or water and see how these pieces interact moving forward. Okay. How about Dr. Karimi, any closing remarks? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm fairly new in the faculty here. Uh, this is the end of my third year, and I can say that being in this department is definitely um, a unique experience that mimics a lot of what you'll experience when you go out into um, industry or even academia, that the people that you're gonna be working closest with are others that are working in similar types of programs of environmental engineering, environmental science, and geology. So it's kind of nice to grow and learn within the context of that um, collaboration rather than just being thrown into that coll collaboration later on. So. Personally, I think our department provides a huge strength in that capacity. And um, I think to reiterate what Dr. Frederick said, we do a lot of field work. We give you a lot of hands-on experiences and uh, contextual experiences with case studies and really learning things from a unique perspective rather than beginning with theory and ending with theory. So uh, I, I really encourage you to consider that. Okay, uh, Mrs. McMonagall, would you like to add anything? I would echo what Dr. Frederick and Dr. Karimi just said. I think our, our strongest points is our, uh, our field experiences and our hands-on experiences in the laboratory. Our students as undergraduates get experience on a significant amount of high-tech instrumentation that at other larger institutions you might not 
uh, be able to utilize until you're a graduate student. So I think our students as undergraduates are uniquely placed when they're graduating to enter the workforce or continue into graduate school with a significant amount of hands-on experience, both in the field and in the lab. Okay, thank you. How about Colonel Castor? Would you like to um, add anything? Just a uh, real short, I, I'm looking forward to having both of you students in my classes. Uh, uh, I attended large universities and I'm a, a retired Air Force uh, officer, a meteorologist. And uh, I, I think that going to a small university has a, has a lot of benefits. And the most important one is you're not a number, you are a person. We know you, we will get to know you, and it's a comfortable um, environment to learn. So I welcome both of you um, and uh, looking forward to having you in the department. Okay, thank you. And Dr. Frederick, you wanted to um, add something? Yeah, I think one of the things that's really challenging is knowing what kind of job opportunities there are. And I think one thing that we really uh, do that is helpful is even when you're in school, give you opportunities to um, talk with alumni, um, you know, on campus or there's events where you can get out and have some activities with alumni um, to get a feel for what kind of job opportunities there are, what people do in their company. I know like one event that we've been running every year at homecoming is when the alumni come in, we usually have, let's say eight to 10 alumni that have different kind of jobs. And they'll, they'll walk you through their career path and what they do, um, you know, what it's like to work for their company. And um, people have come back that have gone to graduate school and they share that with students. So you, it's hard. There's a lot of choices. And sometimes when you pick a field, you might not know exactly what you're going to do. But when you talk to some alumni and you get a feel for, oh, they have the same degree as me and this is what they do. It's good to know that these are the kind of opportunities. So I think that's a very helpful thing um, when you may not have as much familiarity with the, the choices that are available as you move forward. And yeah, and also they're also, uh, our alum are, you know, very, um, been giving back quite a bit and they're available if you have any questions to or need any guidance they're there as resource in fact dr murthy our dean has set up a uh, a mentoring program that he pairs a uh, a recent graduate uh as a mentor to a current student and that's been a quite successful program so to give career advice or you know um you know advice about what courses or elective type things so we've got a nice network that way to support um, you know, your education as well. Okay, I think we've got everybody. And uh, Lily or Matt, anything else we can answer for you? Or uh, No, you guys covered everything. Okay. Yeah. Well, th well, thank you uh, for joining us this morning. We appreciate you taking the time uh, to, you know, to Zoom chat with us. And uh, we look forward to, to seeing you on campus sometime soon. And thank you for all our EES folks for taking the time. I know uh, it's right before finals here, so taking time out of your schedules as well. As I said, this we are recording this, so this will be available uh, as needed. So thank you, everyone, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.